tap into a whole new world of financial possibilities. Genie, get it to get it. The time that leadership is of utmost vitality is when the going gets tough. Having good leadership can be the difference between capitulating to disaster versus sailing ahead to successful horizons. Welcome to your weekend's most profitable 60 minutes. This is Biznomics. I'm Tarudu Amarasekara. The personality we have brought to you today is somewhat of an extraordinary one. Well, talking of tourism, talking of the media and entertainment sector, talking about taking Sri Lankan companies global and motivating Sri Lankan talent to go the distance. Talk of any of those fields, this personality is definitely a shining beacon of hope. He has been very vociferous about the need for Sri Lankan leaders to step up. He's someone whom you would not go for too long without hearing from because he really cares about the future direction of this country. And our special guest today, who will be enlightening us about the importance of leadership and the way forward, is none other than Dr. Kishu Gomez, the Group Managing Director and CEO of Dreamron Group of Companies. Dr. Kishu Gomez, welcome back to Biznomics. Absolute pleasure to have you there. Thank you so much for the wonderful introduction and happy to be back. Uh, and I still remember the first day we did the interview. And that's when you, you know, just began, you know, this, this series and uh, that was very good. Uh, something I quite enjoyed and I'm sure with the questions you have lined up, uh, you know, it will not just be uh, rewarding to uh, the two of us, but uh, to, the, to the viewers. Yeah. Always so insightful to hear from you, uh, Dr. Kishu Gomez. And I still remember as a CMA student in my younger days, listening to you back in 2004. Mm -hmm. And you continue to be compounding and spiraling in growth of the Thank confidence you. you give to your audience as always. And I hope Thank that you. you would do the same to my audience today as well. We'll certainly try, yes. Uh, Dr. <laughs> Kishu Gomez. Yes. Let's uh, cut to the chase. You are a sure. big fan of the truth and the reality. You are never right. known as someone who sugarcoats the reality. Sure. Our economy is not in the best of shape. And is it successive poor business and political leadership that has gotten us here? Mm -hmm. Or is it a conspiracy of much more bigger factors at play here? Well, I mean, there are numerous reasons to it. And as you quite rightly said, the economy is not in good shape. Uh, we all know that uh, we've been basically, you know, battling with it uh, over the past uh, probably, you know, two decades plus. Uh, today, with COVID basically, uh, you know, breaking out and uh, taking a toll on the Sri Lankan economy, and uh, taking a toll on uh, the global economy, we are at a much worse weaker than you know we were at uh, before. Um, so, what are the reasons? Why are we uh, where we are today? That's the question uh, you know we need uh, we need the answers for. Obviously, it's it's. Uh, I mean, in one line, if you want me to explain it, I would say it's a result of uh, misaligned, sustained economic strategies of our country. Uh, who is responsible for it? Is it just the politicians only? No, I wouldn't think so. Because politicians are elected by the people uh, and uh, we have democracy and uh, democracy has its uh, you know, good side and also its bad side. Given the, the tough economic environment we are in, one can um, you know, argue if uh, democracy can really work because uh, in uh, the real world, uh, there's absolutely no way you can please everybody, right? Uh, and only way to please everybody is by making uh, unpopular decisions and creating that environment down the road where everyone can be, you know, happy. But it's a journey. Uh, it's, it's a journey. It's a journey. So you have to, you know, make a start and, um, uh, you know, to be able to do that, you know, make some very tough decisions uh, which will be criticized by the majority at the beginning. And then, obviously, if your strategy is right, you keep working on it, and then start performing. You 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 know show the progress. People should then tolerate, and at the end, obviously, you know we achieve uh, the desired goal. So it's it's, it's due to that. Uh, so under that, uh, you know, we can probably you know talk about uh, many different things. Um, uh, the reasons that have led to the the situation we are in. One big reason, uh, Tarindu, is uh, misaligned education. 
Um, you know, we've always been talking about uh, the high literacy rate compared to some of the other countries in the world. But literacy for what? You know, what is the benefit for being able to, uh, you know, get out of it? Um, literacy is, is good as a foundation, but you've got to build over it, give the knowledge, you know, that has commercial value, that is demanded, you know, that can be uh, marketed, uh, that is recognized, you know, that is branded, uh, and that knowledge is not something we have actually given. Um, so we've been talking about economic, rather, you know, education reforms uh, for so many decades now. The key word is talking about. <laughs> talking about, uh, but nothing much has happened. Mm -hmm. And uh, since, you know, education is uh, very much close to your heart too. Absolutely. There is a private sector that is, you know, working really hard to, you know, give what is demanded by the global market. But uh, in the public sector, uh, public uh, school system and university system, uh, we all know that you get a degree and uh, you have to, you know, go out holding placards uh, demanding for jobs. So uh, that explains everything. So education is one. Um, and also, uh, politicians have actually divided people. They are together. Politicians are together. The 225 are together. They are together and uh, we have enough evidence. Uh, people, you know, tend to ignore those uh, evidence, but they keep seeing and they ignore. Uh, they are blindfolded by, you know, some of the narrations the politicians give. Uh, so people are divided and uh, they do party politics. They, you know, go behind colors. They go behind... Um, uh, you know, wrong politicians, bad politicians. Uh, they keep getting elected despite the fact that they've not been able to perform. Uh, Dr. Gomez, they say that uh, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing and expecting a re different result. Different result. Uh, so <laughs> our people are doing just that. Uh, people have been doing that for the past, uh, you know, 20 plus uh, years. So five uh, governments, uh, essentially. Um, so we can, you know, go on and on talking about uh, the reasons, but uh, I guess uh, those are the, the, you know, key reasons. Uh, so I wouldn't, you know, just blame the politicians, you know. Uh, people, um, you know, out of habit uh, keep, uh, you know, blaming the politicians. And I wouldn't, I keep, I, I, I blame the politicians too, but not only the politicians. Absolutely. A, a nation with a population of more than 21 million people, if we are always saying all the problems are due to 225 people, there is something wrong with the balance 20 million plus as well. Obviously, obviously. Uh, yep. Dr. Kishu, now, yes. I mean, so all this gloom, mm -hmm. we see this dynamic leadership personality, Dr. Kishu Gomez. Mm -hmm. As a business leader, always there with a the drive, trying mm -hmm. to make sense of things. We saw you doing that with regard to the tourism of this country. Mm -hmm. uh, you faced the, the storm, that, the media storm that came to our tourism sector after the Easter attacks with a yes. very positive tone. And you were right. You know, we saw the revival of the tourism sector yes. as well with the good work done by you and the team. Now, how do you keep yourself driven? Because while we see a big sector of people mm. complaining, we mm. see you as a business leader always with a drive, always with a positive focus, getting things done. Right. What's your secret sauce, Dr. Kishore? It's, it's, it's basically, you know, thank you. You know, it's, it's a great question, and I'm sure that's going to benefit, you know, uh, all the viewers who are watching this uh, and uh, who would, you know, watch this uh, on YouTube as well later on, I believe. Uh, it's, it's the attitude, you know, that differentiates you. Uh, well, it could be a problem that are being created by someone else, uh, but if it is a problem that you have to respond to, you take ownership of that. You know, that's the kind of attitude you need to have. There is a problem, and if you don't, you know, find a solution to it, you're going to be a loser as well. Uh, so, therefore, the attitude should be okay. It's my issue as well, though I've, you know, not being a party to, uh, you know, creating it. But uh, I need to resolve it. Otherwise, you know, I can't perform in that environment. So taking ownership and then doing what you can. So in that, uh, Tarindo, it is also important that, uh, you know, you spend all your energy and, um, and uh, you know, put in uh, your uh, effort in trying to control what you can control as an individual. A lot of people, you know, keep wasting time in talking about and in trying to control what you can't. If it is beyond your scope, your control, you know, uh, does it make sense for anybody for that matter? You know, be it a business leader, someone else, you know, be a sports star even. If you can't do anything about it, 
knowing it, you know, as a citizen of the country, well, yeah, I mean, okay, you can, you can be known about it, but uh, don't waste your time and energy and money in, in trying to control what you can't. So, Dr. it's Isho, basically I mean, what you're saying is this famous concept of you get the circle of focus and the circle of control. Right. You keep uh, your attention on the circles of the, the circle of focus, which you care about, but you can't do much. As a right. result, you ignore what you can do. Exactly, exactly. You know, distinguishing between the two, and um, and obviously, I you know, focusing all your energy on what you can control in order to sort of change the situation. Because today we can easily get distracted with all the social media and digital media. Enough and more. There is, we are getting bombarded with information. Yeah, you wake up in the morning. You're confused uh, if you pay attention to the things that uh, you shouldn't be paying attention to. Correct. Knowing is is good. You you know certainly need to know, but you have to obviously uh, you know um, uh, distinguish between uh, what you can do something about Correct. and what you can't, and then decide what you're going to respond to, and then have a plan for the day, and then you know, go on you know addressing that. Um, uh, plus, it is also important that, you know, whatever the environment is, it could be performance, you know, encouraging environment or otherwise, um, you know, you have a vision in life, you know, you have goals in life, you know, you have become somebody and you've got to, you know, go beyond that, uh, so you've got to keep performing and otherwise, you know, you're going to lose everything what you have, you know, gained over the years in terms of reputation, credibility, the admiration, the respect, the love, uh, you know, all of that. Um, and um, it's, it's a crime if you allow it to, you know, drop, diminish, Absolutely. you know. As an individual, as a performer, as a member, you know, of uh, the workforce uh, in Sri Lanka, and as a citizen of the country, you know, you can't uh, embrace, you know, such, um, uh, you know, misaligned, um, uh, you know, notions and, and just give up. You've got to, you know, keep performing uh, until, you know, you close your eyes. I like the fighter spirit that you bring out in your thoughts there, Dr. Kishu. Now, we are facing uncertain times. And even for a leader who is optimistic, who is positive, sometimes, especially it can be policy uncertainty, it can be the macro environmental uncertainty. Hmm. How do you really make tough decisions during uncertain times? Dr. Kishu, you are involved in so many sectors. I'm hmm. quite sure you involve, your decision making involves thinking across multiple different sectors. Yes. How do you make decisions during uncertainty? Because you can wait without making any decisions, okay. but then you won't move forward. Sure. Um, we refer to the current environment as being very uncertain. You tell me if we have ever had a certain environment, Taridu. Uh, <laughs> Right, it has always been uncertain. Right, uncertainty is a new certainty. <laughs> uncertainty is a new certainty. Uh, so it is an uncertain environment uh, that we have to play our game in. So what is important for you is to have a certain plan, right, and and you know move ahead and and uh, you know start playing in that uh, uncertain environment with certainty. That's the way you achieve uh, or you work towards achieving certain results. Right? So it's, again, an attitude and uh, a mindset that you got to have. Um, so there again, as I said, you know, under the second uh, you know, question, if you uh, try to pay attention to the things that you don't control and worry about those things, you know, that will bring your morale down, your spirit down, your energy levels down. And uh, with that, you know, you will uh, obviously be a, a failure. So you can't allow that to happen, you know. Uh, are we going to, you know, just die? hang ourselves? No, we need to still live. We need to keep progressing as individuals and as businesses and as society and as a country. Uh, so if that is what we have to do as uh, living human beings today, then uh, you have only one thing to do, that is bring about certainty with your decisions in the uncertain environment and work towards, uh, you know, achieving certain, uh, you know, go goals. Uh, so in a situation of that nature, you as a leader as to what you have to do, if uh, that was, you know, part of the, the question you asked, uh, while, you know, it wasn't presented that way, it was all embedded in that, uh, uh, you know, you have to work with your people. When the environment is very uncertain, you have to, you know, heighten your communication. Talking to the hearts and minds of people, rally everyone uh, you know around, give them you know your energy, share your energy with them, show them the direction, and and get the best out of them. Uh, it's a very good environment. Uh, uncertain environment is an excellent environment for real performers to you know prove a point. And I 
always like uncertain environments in and then you said okay during uh, tourism uh, the east attack took place uh, and that gave me the opportunity to use what i had in me and i you know proved a point saying yes i mean i was in drinkable beverage uh, for 10 years undrinkable <laughs> you know liquid for 20 plus years yes. and then i got into tourism 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 is a different industry altogether right. yes right uh, and it's a different brand altogether it's all about selling emotions Correct. and you know there was this issue but i drove uh, the industry towards you know um, uh, recovery uh, recovery uh, you know within the shortest possible time yes. and as you very correctly said you had a plan and you worked towards mm. that no matter how uncertain the times were Dr. Ishii, we are going yes. to come back to uh, you on more details on that. Stay tuned. We will be back after this short break. This is Bisnomics. Tap into a whole new world of financial possibilities. Genie, get it to get it. Welcome back to Bisnomics, your weekend's most profitable 60 minutes. We are in conversation with the dynamic personality of Dr. Kishu Gomez, and we are discussing about the way forward during these times for leadership in organizations. Dr. Kishu, now, we spoke about the importance and the vitality of leadership, and you brought out so many vibrant examples. Thank you. Now, let's talk about from the perspective of Sri Lankan business community, mm -hmm. our image as a business community globally, what do we need to do to strengthen it further? Because I think we are talking about it at a very opportune time because we see a young music legend mm. you know, taking her uh, name all out sure. there in the world. And I think we as a nation, this is right. a moment to be proud of. Mm. How come we are not seeing that, that many business names mm. going out to okay. the wider international community? What can we do? Right. Uh, well, I can talk about many things, but uh, let me take the opportunity to talk about one misaligned strategy that we've been believing in and working on. That is the concept of um, entrepreneurship. Um, and I don't think we have used it correctly in order to expand the pie. We have used the, the concept of entrepreneurship to, to you know, share the pie we have already you know, built or created. Um, so what I mean there is that you know, we've done uh, what it takes in order to, uh, you know, get more people into the pipeline. But at the end of it, to convert you know, some of these successful entrepreneurs uh, into global giants, you know, that's where we, we have, you know, not being able to uh, be successful, right? So why is that? It's uh, one thing, you know, lack of, uh, lack of understanding of what we're expecting out of entrepreneurship, right? Um, and we talk about successful entrepreneurs, but we, you know, don't talk about, you know, uh, the, the percentage that has failed. So more people fail. I have not done any research, scientific research, to ascertain as to what percentage has failed. But I would like to throw out this number. If it is incorrect, uh, you prove, uh, 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 you know, that, that I am wrong. But I would say 95% has failed. It's just 5% that has Made the succeeded, but they have not been able to cross uh, borders. Uh, so that's due to uh, wrong strategy by the government, right? So what we do is we try to extend a helping hand to the grassroots level people, and when they become somebody, when they are ready to you know cross borders and fly, then no support is extended. We today, for our luck, have a few guys for being able to you know become global brands bring in you know substantial revenue apparel sector is one we have a few giants you know bringing in as much as 5 billion dollars on an annual basis few uh, ict companies as well uh, selling software and uh, you know some of the other related products we should be extremely happy about it but they have basically gone that far on their own is not with any support of the government, right? Um, so that's where uh, we've been lacking. Number two, we have done everything possible to, to produce products. We've not done uh, the right thing to produce brands, right? This actually brings me to my second question as well, Dr. Kishu. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. What do we need to do to really build global brands? Like, 
the, I, I will come to the second part, which is sure. about made in Sri Lanka. But right. please, can I know branding is one of your core strengths. No, I mean, you just look at how the economies are driven, uh, you know, in the, in the modern world. What does America do? All what they do is they come up with brands, obviously. Technology innovation is there. Correct. And, and, and Dr. there's a separate book called The Brands That Built America, where they speak about the Harleys and all these top brands, which all made that. America popular. Right. And today, I mean, we as Sri Lankans, we always speak of, um, uh, you know, using, uh, be Sri Lankan, you know, use Sri Lankan, you know, eat and drink Sri Lankan. We say it, but uh, are, we, are we actually practice, practicing it, right? It has, you know, gone to an extent where... Uh, you know, chicken is made here, but we eat the American brand. You yes. know, it's chicken made here, produced here, but you don't eat uh, Sri Lankan chicken. You eat uh, American, American, brand. American uh, chicken, right? Now see how bad we are as a country, right? Um, so that's the beauty of building brands. Be one thing we have to understand is that, you know, from a strategic perspective, we are a small nation. We don't have economies of scale, you know, to be able to take on the competition from larger uh, geographies where they have economies of scale, Correct. right? So we will always have to, you know, depend on smaller volume. And I mean, you are an economist, you know it better than me. Unless you're able to, you know, fetch the right price for your, your product by branding it, you won't be able to generate the revenue you have to generate as a country. Then Dr. Kishore, I want to share this with you sure. as well. There's one uh, European chocolate brand that was mm. operating in Sri Lanka and they seem to be having a massive operation. And right. when, I, when I asked the guys, do you really right. make a profit? Right. They said, no, we don't make a profit, but right. just that we make enough profits from the European region itself. Right. Right. We just want to be here for right. the sake of being here. Now, how do you compete with something like that? The, the, this is the thing. This is the thing. So, so only solution there is, you know, we need to build brands, and uh, we have a few good examples. Uh, we have a good example in the tea industry, absolutely, uh, and there are a few other, you know, um, examples as well. So, it is doable. We've done it. Uh, it is doable, and uh, it's a matter of board base in that, and and you know, having one more brands as opposed to you know sending products out, uh, which wouldn't give you the the margin that you desire. Uh, so that has to get corrected. But uh, for us to be able to position Sri Lanka, you know, as a brand, right, country brand. A national brand. National brand. What is important is, um, you know, you have to build on a foundation. And, and, and for you to be able to lay that foundation, consistency, right? Walk the talk and build your brand on values. Do we have values as a country? Those have been deteriorating in every you know, aspect of it. And um, who are responsible for it? Politicians to a very large extent in this case, right? Uh, and we keep hearing uh, you know, stories on a daily basis uh, that harms the brand, national brand, that affects the brand, that is a deterrent to the Sri Lankan national brand. Um, so uh, for that, yes, we can probably blame the politicians up to 99%. Um, so who has to correct it? People have to correct it by electing the right people, uh, you know, to the parliament, and uh, influencing them, forcing them to, you know, do the right thing. And is it up to the uh, general public? No, I think uh, the business, uh, you know, leaders have to, you know, come together and and uh, keep influencing, keep uh, pressurizing the government uh, because otherwise uh, we as business leaders wouldn't be able to, uh, you know, perform. Uh, and Dr. Kishu, don't you think there's also a very vital role that even the, the diplomacy sector, hmm. the diplomats need to play in building the brand image of Sri Lanka? Because we see them, with the reason why they call them amb ambassadors is because when they go abroad, they are representing their voice, is the voice of the nation. But we sometimes see that in front of foreign media, their speeches become an utter disaster. <laughs> Thank you for bringing that out. And I've been but, working but with... this is what we see. I, I, true, true, true. And, and very timely as well for many reasons, reasons that you and I know. I've been working with uh, diplomats uh, for the past, you know, uh, three decades or so. I was the president of the American Chamber of Commerce. I'm Cham. Uh, I'm Cham. And during that time, you know, I've been very closely working with all the ambassadors, um, high commissioners from other countries. And during my uh, tourism uh, time, uh, it was a daily interaction with them and their marketeers. They are marketeers. They are there to support 
uh, value creation for their motherlands in the countries they uh, you know operate in. Correct. That's the role. And as opposed to that, what are our people doing? Right? Do they have the capacity in the first place? Do they understand the role? That they are and have to be we, playing. Yeah, I mean, have, have we actually uh, you know, set expectations as to what we're expecting out of these people? Right? So once you set expectations and goal, and this is the role, you know, have we defined that? Okay, this is the role. And who can perform this uh, role for, for the country? And then you know, go and select people. And that's not how we have, have been doing as successive governments. And um, obviously, it's being criticized heavily. And uh, some decisions have been reverted, I hear, or will be reverted. Uh, good, but then there has to be a fundamental correction. There has to be people with business acumen uh, who should be appointed to you know, these positions. Otherwise, uh, you know, growing the country's economy uh, will continue to be a, a dream. Because we saw in the face of these attacks how when CNN drills you and questions you, hmm. you made the very bold statement, today's safest country can be uh, the, the most affected country tomorrow. Most vulnerable, most vulnerable country vulnerable tomorrow. One tomorrow. Now, yeah. that, when a message like that goes, it immediately drives a sense of consensus to the media. And at the same time, it also shows that the country is aware of the situation and they know what's being done. Right. Whereas uh, that level of confidence might not sure. always be evident. No, that's extremely important. And, and you are in the, in the game of uh, you know, communication as well. And communication is totally misunderstood in our country. People think communication is language and language only. Communication is not just the language. It's not just looking at a piece of paper and <laughs> no, reading it's not, it out. It's not. It's something, something you know, much bigger than that, much more than that, much complex as, uh, you know, right. than that. Yes. And it's a style, it's a rhythm, it's the role, you know, tone, and it's everything else. I don't need to tell you. I mean, if I asked that question for me, you would, you know, do a much better job. So, so you know, these people have to have business acumen, and they have to be super communicators, right? right. They go and stand in front of somebody. Yes, that's a part of the brand Sri Lanka. Brand Sri Lanka, and that power has to be reflected, Absolutely. right? And then you can get the respect from them, get them to pay attention to your story. And without that, how can you win? Uh, you hearts know, hearts and minds of the world. Hearts and minds of the world, you know, through communication. There is absolutely. absolutely no way. So let's hope that it'll uh, be corrected uh, sooner than later. Uh, Dr. Kishu, as a business leader, mm -hmm. what better decisions would you like to see? The easy answer might be all, but mm. let me ask a more specific <laughs> sure. one. Right. What better policy decisions would you expect from the policymakers of this country? Um, well, in terms of decisions, um, uh, consistency of uh, you know decisions is important. You make a decision, right? Or I mean, you just go through a, a process. Uh, Basically, listening to everybody, bringing everyone's you know ideas together, pulling them together, funneling it through, deciding what is right for the country, in the medium to long term, not in the short term, and then you make a decision and then you stick to it, right? You don't you know keep uh, uh, you know fluttering or you know keep changing the the direction, and and that is important. Um, uh, but uh, with that, um, you know what is uh, important is 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 also. Uh, basically move away from uh, imported uh, dependent economy to a uh, you know, local uh, production economy, right? And that fundamental correction uh, you know, is something that we very badly need. Um, so with that uh, you know, policy uh, decision, hard policy decision, uh, how can you obviously uh, you know, uh, create an environment within which the local producers, you know, will be able to build a sustainable business, and through that to create, uh, you know, economic value for the country. I mean, look at the things we are um, uh, importing today. We are importing rice. We are importing sugar. We are importing green so grain. Yes. We are importing soap. We are importing shampoos. We you know we are importing shoes, clothes. You know everything, and we are importing. Uh, you know, meat, we are importing vegetables, we are importing, um, uh, you know, fruits. What uh, don't we import? We import everything uh, when we have... Uh, and then we cry foul saying we don't have the dollars. We don't have the dollars. So, you know, that fundamental correction, uh, you know, has to be made. And without that, there is absolutely no way we can drive the country's economic growth. Understood. And on that policy, 
uh, you know, create that uh, environment uh, for the local producers to basically uh, be able to build sustainable businesses. And then beyond that, uh, create the environment, create the policy uh, framework of our incentives for them to become global giants. Correct. Here, uh, you know, successive government, not just this government only, but successive governments have been extending that helping hand to the to people enter. like that. And they are not the type of people who can go and challenge the rest of the world. It's Correct. the, you know, uh, uh, people, you know, um, on, on top of the pyramid, you know, who can challenge the rest they are, of the they world. They are ready to fly, they are, launch them. Yeah, so, you know, while, you know, it is important to, you know, keep uh, sure. uh, filling the pipeline, uh, it's more important for you as a country to, you know, help those, these guys to cross borders and bring in um, uh, uh, external, you know, value Correct. assets into the country so that you will expand the pie. Nice thoughts there, uh, Dr. Kishu. We are going to come back in more details on that. What an insightful discussion so far. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. And we will be back after this short break. This is Bisnomics. Welcome back to Businomics. We are in conversation with Dr. Kishu Gomez on many topics pertaining to the current economic situation and the important role that leadership can play in setting the right direction. Dr. Kishu, my next question mm. is more geared towards the younger generation okay. because we have so many members of that genre mm. who is uh, watching this show, who is following what we discuss in Businomics. Sure. Now, as a leader of a leading organization and as someone who interacts with the youth across many different fronts, you see the young talent that is entering the workforce of Sri Lanka. Mm. But what do you feel or what do you see that they need to work on mm. so that they can contribute better sure. to the economy? Okay. Uh, before I you know, answer that question, let me say that younger generation is smarter. Smarter than my generation and your generation. Sorry for saying it, but uh, that's what I experienced. They are very smart. They are very sharp. They are skilled. Uh, they have, uh, you know, better analytical minds. Correct. But they question more. There is a difference, there is a disconnect between the quality and performance. Right? That's what we need to bridge. fill, uh, bridge, you know, in terms of, you know, the gap. And that's the answer to the question. Uh, the younger generation, uh, you know, wants quick results, fast results, results tomorrow. Just, you know, act on something and they need to see results tomorrow. They need to realize that, you know, for, for uh, results, you go to wait, right? Dr. Isha, are you talking about this common problem of the younger generation, especially the millennials, wanting mm. this instant gratification? Right, You know, right. when they want something, Obviously. take it, order, one press, one swipe, they get what That's they want. That's it, you know, fast world and, and um, uh, certain environments, certain situations might, you know, permit that too. So if they achieve success and they think, okay, they can go on, you know, playing the game on that basis and, and, and uh, you know, continue to win, that is wrong, right? Because there are certain instances, certain activities where you can expect, uh, you know, quick results. But by and large, in this very uh, tough economic environment, fiercely competitive market environment, uh, when consumers uh, and, and businesses have so much, you know, choices uh, to, to, to make, uh, obviously, uh, the success will come, uh, you know, having gone through a very progressive, uh, you know, journey. Uh, so they need to have patience. They need to have patience. Uh, so that's one, patience, right? Uh, number two, when it comes to the workforce, I mean, there are young guys who have got into businesses and, um, you know, for them it would be different. But uh, if you are working for an employer and uh, you have very high aspirations, you want to rise up, you know, become uh, the younger CEO uh, of Sri Lanka or, you know, become a senior manager at the age, age of 35, you know, 40, whatever. So you held that record, I remember. Uh, I believe you still have. <laughs> I, uh, well, <laughs> I wouldn't, you know, make any comment on that. But, uh, yeah, so uh, job hopping uh, is, is happening at a rate. Yes, right. the attrition as they call it, within companies. Within companies, you know, that's, that's uh, a, a new trend uh, which is not healthy. Um, and I've worked for two organizations, literally, uh, two American organizations. First organizations, I was there for 11 plus years. Second one, 23. And then I had a, you know, stint in the tourism. Uh, being public, people understand the reasons why I, you know, exited. 
uh, very timely uh, because I've, I had built a name and I had to safeguard, nurture that and protect that. Uh, I mean, <laughs> let's tell, the, let's speak the truth here. Dr. Kishu Gomez is a brand, is a brand of leadership. And I had to, you know, nurture that and protect it. I didn't want anybody to, you know, come and dilute tarnish that, it, yes. tarnish that. So therefore, I, I made that exit, having performed again. Yes, uh, yes. So, so And having brought back the tourism numbers tourism back numbers. to what it was pre-attack. That's right. So... So, and then, of course, in this organization now, having retired, literally retired from, uh, you know, the previous organization I worked for. Um, so, if, if somebody looks at me and, and you, since you said it, uh, to, to become the youngest Sri Lankan to, you know, head a multinational organization, um, that is because I stuck to, you know, one organization 11 plus years, you know, working for a multinational, going through the mill, learning uh, the hard way, getting international exposure. Being patient and staying being patient. patient, staying patient yes. and, you know, taking upon, you know, all the stressors and, and pressures, you know, that came my way, navigating a bad organizational cultures. Politics. Right? Politics and you know what not. Very Dr. Kishu, I want to just add sure. this one thing here. Sure. Because what you're saying is quite valid because we hmm. see a lot of young people. Right. All of a sudden they've been in the company for three months. Right. And they are like, no, I'm leaving because I don't get to create an impact. Right. You've been there only for three months. Sure, sure, sure. I mean, how can you say, you know, things like that? Is it too and much of YouTube motivational videos that is driving <laughs> them in the wrong direction? <laughs> it could be that could be one and there could be other reasons as well. Uh, so obviously, you know, if you want to make a career, uh, you know, you should be able to have, need to have the mindset to be able to navigate the, these things. And I keep telling the younger generation two things, right? When they come to me for advice or when I get the opportunity to advise them, don't look for good organizations. They don't exist in this world. There are no good organizations, right? One. Number two, uh, can you find good leaders? Nice bosses, good bosses, no, they don't exist, exist you know, either. So don't, you know, look for good organizations and good bosses. Every single organization is good. Every single boss is good. Have that attitude and see how, if you are smart enough, how you can, you know, perform in these environments. It can be the worst organization, worst boss, but if you are saying that you are good, perform. Right? Then, then you are a superstar. Right. right? So have that attitude. Mm. And that's the way that because you have to approach good, you your situation. Able to perform anywhere. Right. So I'll, I'll, I'll share one example sure. very, very sure. quickly. Somebody who's very close to me joined an organization. Uh, and I was, you know, one of the referees. So this uh, owner, you know, knows me very well. He called me. And uh, I said, the guy is good. Actually, the guy is a very committed guy. So I had no hesitation in recommending him. So I said, yes, please do take him and he'll do wonders. So he then uh, gave me a feedback saying, lot to change. You know, every, uh, things are not in uh, order. And he gave me why the organization was bad. Mm. I said, this is the employee. The employee that I recommended. I said, fantastic. That's the best opportunity for you. Absolutely. Chance to perform. You, you have a match to perform, win and show. You know, you, 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 you know, you have an opportunity to, you know, prove yourself. So just, you know, take it that way. And then, you know, about the organizational culture. Uh, you know, I have to, uh, you know, take instructions from this person, that person. And, uh, you know, so I said that again is good, <laughs> right? Uh, so you have more people to, uh, you know, go to if you need help. And there are more eyes, you know, on you. So nothing will go unnoticed, right? Yeah. So you keep performing. It's not just, uh, you know, pair of eyes, but so many pairs. What a better environment that, that you tell me, Tarino? See the bright side of it. And you perform, you, you know, get recognized and then rewards will follow you. Correct. Right? That's the way to look at it. So these are some of the things, you know, younger generation has to understand and uh, move, move forward. And Dr. Kishu, from your experience, What's the formula for getting the best out of people? Because I remember this example you quoted. I remember mm. you said when you were working for one organization that was into lubricants. You know, mm. as you said, the sure. non-drinkable liquids. <laughs> right. um, I still remember these words where you said that you mm. ask your sales managers to get out of their comfortable air-conditioned offices and go to the market, road, go yeah. to the market, speak to the dealers, right. understand what they're going through. Spend time with customers and channel partners. Absolutely. I yes. still remember those words you shared way back right. in 2004. Uh -huh. So, 
Is that it? Is, is it about engagement? Is that what helps you to get the best out of the people or are there any more uh, secret tactics? No, I mean, there are a um, few things that you need to do. I mean, number one is your performance measurement criteria. Uh, KPIs as they call KP, it. KPIs and then how to measure it and, you know, scientifically and then, you know, how to arrive at a score at the end where the, perform uh, uh, the environment is created, set, um, uh, you know, embedded into the system where you will be able to recognize true performance of your performers, right? Because unless that environment is created, that culture is basically promoted within the organization, people will not have a reason to perform. Very, very fundamental, right? Um, so, so that is number one. Okay, if I perform, there is a reward, there is a benefit, and there is recognition. So therefore, I want to perform. So that, you know, mindset has to be that, created, yes. right? So you start with that, and then how do you motivate people? Obviously, um, you know, you need to uh, be a very powerful communicator, keep performing, keep energizing people, keep directing people, you know, towards, you know, that end game. Uh, and then uh, don't try to build uh, brilliant uh, individuals. Try to build brilliant teams, right? Most leaders go wrong by having their favorites and ignoring the people, you know, who are really weaker performing. performers, weaker performers, and then, you know, try to depend on good performers only. Correct. So why are you then uh, the employing good children the, and the bad children? Bad children, children right? Yeah. So you will always have people, you know, performing at different elevations. And that's quite uh, natural in any field, you know, you will have Even that. Even in sports, you get the match winners and the ones who keep the match going. Exactly, right? So you've got to understand that fundamental. See how much you can get from these people and yeah. how to get that, you know, uh, optimal, you know, results from this uh, level of people. Yeah. And then you have this level of people and then you have this level of people. So unless you get the best out of all three categories in this example, yes. you will not be able to perform, you know, as a business unit or as an organization. For sure. And if you are only working with the, the top-notch, you know, guys, the real performers, true performers, the super performers, mm. they will, you know, give their best, true enough, but you're not getting... Uh, the best out of these people and these people. So obviously, net net, yes. you will not achieve, uh, you know, much. Uh, Dr. Kishu, on a final note, in the last mm -hmm. few minutes, I right. would like to get from you your outlook for Sri Lanka and Asia going into 2022. How are the signs looking? Okay. Uh, so, I mean, we know that um, in uh, 2020, uh, the global economy crashed and uh, GDP uh, loss was estimated to be around uh, 6%. And, and that works out to about uh, $5 trillion, uh, $5 trillion. Uh, of the global economy. <laughs> global economy. Um, but in uh, 2020, um, uh, if you look at year-to-date performance, we are... In 2021. 2021, rather. Uh, the the rate of recovery is good. Correct. Um, we did so have a V-shaped recovery. V-shaped recovery. So by the end of the year, uh, the, the global economy should be able to, you know, go back to... Uh, the levels pre-pandemic level. So that's the forecast, right? Uh, which is which is not bad, yes. given that, you know, this pandemic, you know, was something nobody had answers, uh, you know, well, for. Yes. Uh, and then, of course, we have half answers now, not full answers, but uh, we are getting... Some you know, light towards, at the end of the tunnel. Towards, you know, having a complete solution. So let's hope that that would come, you know, fast enough. Uh, in terms of Sri Lanka, yes, we are also recovering. But there are certain sectors uh, which will take a longer time to recover, tourism. like tourism, for example. That $4.5 billion that we're making, um, uh, you know, won't, you know, come for the next uh, two to probably, you know, not this side of uh, two years. So beyond that, yes, we can, you know, from that level, we can easily Surpass. go up to $7 billion to $10 billion beyond that, uh, for which we need to start uh, rebuilding the tourism industry today, not when, you know, things are normal. Um, because... People are making their plans to get out of their home countries to enjoy their life because right. it, it, it is COVID-19 today. Yes. It can be something else two years down the road. It can be COVID-21 or 22. 21 or 22. And so, Dr. VC Seychelles is experiencing a huge tourism boom. Their currency it has appreciated by about 60%. It's one of the strongest performing currencies due to their tourism boom. 
Exactly. So, so even people Rwanda actually, is having a fantastic no, bounce of their currency. My contention is that, okay, I mean, 1.4 uh, billion people travel across the world on an annual basis. If you look at the past, you know, five years average uh, numbers, of which about uh, 1 billion uh, on leisure, right? And uh, the maximum number we have gotten is 2.3 million, right? So even if the tourism industry as a whole recovers by 50%, you still have 700 million More. people traveling, yes. right? So you know, why can't you get uh, 3 million out of it, 4 million out of it, 5 million out of it? It is doable, it can be done even within this environment. So what is important is for us to have a safe environment in terms of safety protocols, uh, health uh, protocols, Correct. and, and uh, to, to be able to make a good start, we need to tell our Sri Lankan people as to why tourism is important and they think uh, it's not for their benefit. And government and the stakeholders have not done proper communication to tell the people as to why tourism is important. We have no choice. And if they want better education, better health, uh, uh, you know, better facilities, uh, road uh, infrastructure and you know, everything else, better tomorrow, yes. tourism is the way to go. Uh, and being in tourism, I can, you know, with conviction say it. Uh, but we are a small economy, $83 billion. Uh, so therefore, a couple of good things happening can give us that you know, extra $10 billion that we need. Which can mean a lot to our economy right now. Lot to our economy. So um, uh, the volume uh, that we need is small. As a percentage, it may be a big percentage. But there is so much economic value out there in the, in the world that you can you know, tap into. Let's get together, make that happen. And every one of us, you know, you can be a, a man working on the street. You have a contribution to make. I have a contribution to make. You have a contribution to make. And you have a contribution to make. Dr. Kishu Gomas, inspiring as always. Thank you for inspiring Sri Lankans to do more, Thank to you. go the distance and to go beyond. Uh, we wish you good luck with all your future endeavors in your corporate life, in your other ventures, as well as uh, in terms of being a good Sri Lankan and inspiring more Sri Lankans. Keep doing what you, do, what you are doing because I believe Sri Lanka needs more leaders like you. Thank you Thank for joining us. Thank you so much. Us. Thank you for the opportunity and all the best to you and to all the viewers. No matter what position you may be in, all of us have a role to play in building a better Sri Lanka, a, a stronger brand of Sri Lanka and taking the Sri Lankan story to the rest of the world. And in the coming week, no matter what business you may be in, we wish you the power, the courage, the energy to do just that. I'm Tarindu Amara Sekara and I will see you with the next episode. This is Bisnomics. Tap into a whole new world of financial possibilities. Genie, get it to get it.